Ciao a tutti, here uh, we are with our weekly appointment. Also this week Elena is uh, with me. Ciao Elena, how are you? And uh, of course how is Marco? Hello everyone, uh, Marco is better but uh, he still needs some uh, time to recover. And what about you Elvis, how was your week? Uh, I can say that uh, this week has been uh, very challenging. Uh, um, uh, very challenging one, but uh, let me show a video and I will tell you about it. So, uh, I think I already told last time that uh, Ferdi sent us some uh, eggs from uh, his, um, his farm and uh, I uh, started with the kids to put them inside the incubator and then uh, after eight days we started to check if uh, inside of them there was uh, some uh, chicks or not and uh, this is Elliot that is checking so we divided the, uh, the eggs that was good uh, to, from the others and finally after uh, 21 days uh, here they was uh, opening the eggs and was uh, they were and here they were burned cute how many two yeah they uh, yeah just two because it was our first time and then uh, i think also between the collecting of the eggs uh, and the shipment and the everything uh, uh, you know some was uh, was not good but uh, these two you know they are uh, the love of the kids <laughs> very nice very nice and then uh, there is also another video finally we had uh, Batista our mare that uh, we was waiting a, a fall by her that she delivered and uh, here uh, the baby was uh, just born so you can see she was uh, still uh, all wet what? and um, yeah as I told you it's been a very challenging week because uh, she looks um, perfect but then uh, at the end of the day uh, she started to be a little bit suffering and uh, so we was worried because she go to um, she goes to the mother and try to, to take the milk but uh, she drink just few and uh, and then stop and you see she was uh, eating here this was during the day so looks normal but then at the end of the day she started to not to eat very much so we had to bring her in clinic uh, here she is already in the clinic and we go daily to visit her and uh, I can say that finally she is out of uh, danger now and I hope she will come home uh, tomorrow. This is a video that the vet sent me from the clinic. After uh, three days of clinic she, they put her out, a little bit outside just to enjoy the sun. Uh, as you can see the neck is still with the, the band and everything. And, and here again, go, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we go every day and uh, you can see the joy of uh, Elliot looking at her, you know, you can see the big smile because here uh, she was already very good, uh, you see, <laughs> she started ah, yes. to yeah, act uh, like a normal uh, fall. She's very cute uh, and uh, the mother is Battista, right? Yeah, 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 you know, I, of course, uh, I was dreaming to have a nice uh, and uh, gorgeous filly, but uh, as you know, Batista is a very old mare, she is almost uh, 19 years old, and uh, so I was expecting something nice, but uh, I was also ready to be, I was prepared to, because this filly, uh, I would like to keep like uh, my brood mare, and uh, so I was uh, already prepared to wait uh, one generation to get a super nice head. And uh, she really gave me something that I have not to wait another generation. As you can see, the head is very dishy and very nice. And uh, I'm sure she will be better and better because um, normally this uh, bloodline is, uh, uh, you know, you, you have to wait them. But uh, she is already so nice now. and. Uh, we are very happy about her. I and can we imagine. Her. Yeah, also because it was two years that we was waiting a filly from her because last year she did a, a colt uh, still for... Ah, this is the drawing that my kids prepared uh, to welcome her back at home. And um, 
you know, last year she had a colt for Ferdi still, and um, this year uh, we was dreaming to have a filly, and she gave me this filly, so we already had the name ready, Soleada, uh, Soleada Le Soleil, and uh, I hope she will uh, grow up and will uh, become our broodmare. I'm very happy for you, she is very cute. By the way, our first guest is well, very well known uh, as uh, the breeder of one of the most famous stallions all over the world, Echies Alejandro. Willie, are you connected? Hi, Willie. How are you? Hi. <clears throat> all very good, and you? Very good, thank you. Very good. Nice we to have you here. We hope yes, uh, things nice are... to hear from you too, huh? We hope things are going well in uh, South Africa. How are you doing and uh, how is the situ situation there? Uh, it's, it's so far it's good. Um, as I said, we, the coronavirus, it was at uh, quite a, a later stage than Europe. Um, we didn't have so many cases yet and not so many deaths, but we're actually getting into our winter now. So it was summer until three, four, five, five weeks ago. So, so yeah, it will be a very challenging time to see if it's going to work in the next few months because as in Europe, it was all the, the winter time. So yeah, let's see. I hope for it's not going to be as bad as Europe for sure. Willy, you are the breeder of the famous uh, Antemed uh, AKS Aliandro. What you can tell us about him and uh, was he when, um, how, how was he when uh, he was a baby and uh, would you have ever thought uh, later in his life he could become world champion? You know, it's a very interesting story. Um, when we bought the mare, I always believed that this mare with Marwan could be a really good cross. So she had the first baby and we lost the first baby to Marwan due for, a, he had a kind of um, stomach thing. So, and it was very disappointing and I just decided, well, I'm going to do the breeding again. So, at the end of the day, we did the breeding again and I will never forget it the day Alejandro was born. He was like two, three hours old, already standing up in the barn, like looking around. And I just had this feeling that I think this horse can, can do really good. You know, we're in South Africa. It's very, very difficult to compete with the rest of the world. And yes, I gave Jack him a call and I said, I think we have to try and do something. So with the shipping, which was a problem and it's still not very easy from South Africa, we had to wait a bit and then we decided to show him in South Africa. He was, Jack him showed him, he was South African national champion cult. And then me and Jack him we, we decided it's time he needs to go to Europe. And then we put the whole plan together and yeah, from there it was history. Yeah? Yeah, we can see this video of uh, the World Championship. It was really amazing that day. I was there looking at him and he entered the arena. It looks like, uh, uh, you know, very charismatic and with this movement. And uh, of course, Giacomo presented it uh, him so, so well. I think it's a really, uh, Giacomo has this ability to he connect with a stallion. And once they connect, it's like everything comes together. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think Ward did also a very good job as the manager of Atba and managing um, Alejandro. And as I always believe, you know, it's not about one person only. It's like it's like a team. Everything needs to be in place and needs to work together. And at the end of the day, if this happens, I think yeah, it's like a success story, like the Alejandro story. So, and I would have never imagined that he can be twice a world champion. So, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a, it was a very good accomplishment, I must say. But I mean, as I say, Jack and Ward they also played a big role in his in his career, successful career. So, Will, can good. you can you please uh, tell us uh, your story with Arabian horses? Uh, was your family already in the business, or you started it? No, um, I always was into horses since I was very very young. My first horse was a little Welsh pony and my family was never into horses. So I had always had this passion and I would have loved to have my own horses. So then I went from pony to one or two other breeds. And then I think it was in 1995, I decided that I have to, because I was already working in the family business and I wanted to start a hobby. 
and obvious horses seemed like a good hobby and yes uh, it started all there so i bought some local horses here in south africa and then breed them once or two babies and i sold them and then i went to america and i bought the first stallion from michael byte arabians and yeah it's just i was always this thing for horses i mean and i think the the passion for Arabian horses is just good, stronger and stronger and, you know, traveling around the world, meeting people like that has really good breeding programs, learning from them, looking what they are doing and starting to create your own idea. I mean, so it was not a family thing. It was just, I think, a, a, a passion thing and started as a hobby and yeah, this is where we are today. So, yeah, actually very fortunate to, to have a hobby like this. You did great uh, so far. How long are you been breeding? Well, my first horses I bought in 1995. So okay, that's from 1995. Yeah, so it's for uh, quite a while. You sent us some uh, videos of uh, your facilities and your horses. Uh, let me show. Uh, let me play them uh, so we can comment them uh, about it. Okay. So this is your farm. Yes, it's the farm we started in 2007. Uh, my dad is big into agriculture, um, producing export plum for European markets. He's also a chicken farmer. So, and this is the original farm that my grandfather already bought when he started his farming career. So it's quite like it's like I'm the third generation. So and yeah, we started in 2017, uh, 2007. And we created two barns, one breeding barn and one barn that is for the young horses and for the weanings and for the stallions. Uh, the view is amazing with this mountain in the background. Uh, I think it's beautiful. Yes, we are very privileged because we're in a very nice area between all the wine farms and between all the mountains. So it's really, it's a really, really, the atmosphere is amazing. And so you are producing also wine in your farm or not? No, no, no wine, but a lot of wine oh, okay. around the farm. No, we, um, yeah. I was so already yes, planning all the, my all to, to come and, <laughs> and drink a glass of your wine. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, the wine is very, very good in our area. So, yes. And most of the, the things we do on the farm, like the breedings and everything, I do myself, like all the inseminations and stuff like this. So it's like a, it's a very small farm. We have only 15 broodmares, but yeah. And um, yeah, but as I said, we, we try to do everything. And so far it was- Who quite, is this nice mare? It was quite a big success. This is a WH Justice daughter that she was bred in Israel and she's WH Justice out of uh, Imperial Madin granddaughter. And she had uh, some really nice babies. She had uh, Ibn Farid Feli and then she had an Ibn Farid Colt. And this year she had a really nice filly from, from Shams al -Din. Shams is a stallion we leased from Mariela because at the end of the day, we like to use young stallions and try something new with some different pedigrees. And, I had this vision in my breeding program that a lot of things are very modern and everyone is breeding with the same stallion. So what we try to do is we try to get young stallions, breed them to our mares and see what the, the, the ability is for them to produce progeny and genetics that can take, take the breeding program forward. So we try for sure a little more and because we're not it's not easy for us to get frozen semen in south africa and to get permits and it's just so what we had the concept a few years ago is to try young stallions we breed them to our mares and we see what they're... until now we had a very very good success the world champion called farage last year was by ibn farid and we bought ibn farid in the sharjah from dr ganem from alavajer and he never bred mares and we gave him some of our mares and we had some really, really good progeny from him, which is um, Ikea's Farage. Then we had a full brother to him also on his way to Europe. And now we have a filly, also full sister to Farage. And she will also be 
shipping to Europe soon. So yeah, it's and then we sold him to Midcrest Arabians in America. And the first babies from him is really looking very spectacular, and they are very happy. So so yeah, sometimes it's a it's a risk you take, but in anything it's a risk. So until now, the young stallions did really good for us. And this filly. This is a filly we bought a mare a few years ago from Giacomo. It was a straight Egyptian mare and Alaya daughter. And um, the mare we lost last year due to a really bad freak accident. And this is actually a filly by her out of Ibn Farid. And she's one year old now. So it's a combination of straight Egyptians with the modern pedigree like Arif Farid in the pedigree and some Marwan. And yeah, so this and she will be one of our future brood mares. Um, yeah, and as I said, she just is a yearling now. And yeah, so this is what we try to do is have a little bit of Egyptian with some modern pedigree. So, yeah. I now think this is a very good, uh, good things to do because, uh, you know, uh, nowadays uh, all the horses uh, get more closer in the pedigree and uh, it's nice that people, uh, uh, you know, use um, new stallions or uh, some new bloodline and put inside of the of the blood. Yes, and we were very fortunate. Last year we bought the stallion from Al Zuberstad. He is by Magic One out of FM Gloria, Barjaz Al Zuber. So he is also on his way to South Africa. So he will also be a young stallion that will get some mares. And then last week we had a, a very good opportunity to bought a very nice stallion also from Al Zuberstad. He is by Al Rashim out of uh, um, Magnum's Lucky Granddaughter. So. Yeah, so another two stallions, young, didn't have babies, produced one or two babies, but not a lot of mares. So this is what we try to do. It's it's for us easier to have like a stallion in South Africa and make it um, available for other breeders to also to also use them and get the uh, new pedigrees and new bloodlines in their pedigree. So yeah, yeah. And this one? This is also a filly. She's only like six months old now. This is the first baby we had from Sham Saldin, the straight Egyptian from Ariella, out of the Justice daughter, out of the Imperial Madin granddaughter. So already it's like, I think 75% Egyptian blood. So, but this is the kind of fillies we will we will retain back at our farm and keep them for future broodmares and we will breed them. This kind of filly, I think what we will do is we will breed her for sure to this Mabouf al with the Rashim, the great Psyche. So yeah, so this is, um, yeah. We leased the, the stallion and he also needs to go back now because we leased him for two years. Um, so he will go back to Ariella and we know that Ariella, they said they will for sure use him in the breeding program. So yeah, once again, a young stallion, babies on the ground and let's see the future of him. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And this other one? This is also a very interesting mare. It's another El Jamal daughter, again, straight Egyptian. But the dam line is a star of Antigua daughter, which El Shakab owned and they sold her. I think she's owned by Shirley Watts now. And the mother line is a El Perfecto daughter. She was also bred in Europe and um, another guy imported her. And he at one stage wanted to sell the mare. So we bought the mare from him. And yeah, so it's like, this is actually a mare that I had uh, the grandmother, the mother, and I own her now. So, and it's also like a very interesting pedigree. Once again, Egyptian a little bit on the top, and then with a little bit of W and Star of Antigua, out of an El Perfecto map. Yeah, we try to do something different with different pedigrees a little bit, because it's, I think once you have this thing about you have something different, there will always be a market for a good horse with a different pedigree. So. And yeah, this is the, what we try. So let's see how it will work in the future. And this, I think, is Shams Aldin. Uh, no, this is still the Nadri Al Jamal. Shams Aldin, I think, is the. No, this is the um, the Nadri Al Jamal daughter. She's in fall to Shams Aldin for next year. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, Elena, maybe we have some questions from the social room? Yes, of course. We have uh, Ben from USA. Hello, I'm a big fan of Ali. I'm curious to know if you ever replied the same crossing with his mother and if there are any full brothers or sister, how they look like? 
Um, I know. I think there was a full sibling born in America. Two years ago, we sold an embryo to, to a guy in, in America. I'm not sure what it is, a belly or a cold, but um, with me, I didn't do it again. I did breed Alejandro, and then I breed uh, the mother, I breed to Fadi. She had a really nice cult that I sold to breeders in South Africa. But um, sometimes I, it's not a lot that I breed a mare to the same to the same combination. I like to take a mare and breed her maybe to three different stallions to see what the mare's breeding ability is. But yes, with Alejandro, it was he only him. I didn't do the same mating again. But in Europe, we sold the embryo to to some to some people in America. And I think it, uh, the the baby was born. So. And the the mother is still alive, right? Yes, the mother is still with um, Giacomo. Ah, okay. And she is in full now. Yes. With I who? think she is in. We actually bred her to the other stallion from um, from Adba, this um, this Kubanek son. So oh, yeah. I still ah, yeah. waiting for the Saber baby. Sahara. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. It is a very it nice is also just it is a very nice stallion. Yeah, I always did it because the the semen quality was good and we wanted to do it with fresh semen, so yeah, it and you know if you don't try you never know. So oh, of course. So good luck. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. The, then you have a Camosi of a Sama Farm. What process uh, do you follow in order to choose a future stallion, uh, not to try it before? I think most of my breedings until today, it's like, you know, we ride a lot. We also ride a lot of our horses. So for me, I always try to search for a horse that is content wise, um, really good. Um, legs, it's quite important, but also the pedigree is important, but I think mainly it's you have to have an idea in your mind what you want to produce and what you want to do. And normally I take it in phases. Let's say I breed with Shams. Now I look at two other stallions that I think can complement Shams and to try something different. So I think most of my breedings until today I did it on a, on a feeling. If I have a good feeling about it and I want to try it and people say, oh, you're crazy. I will still do it because it's just the way I am. So I uh, I try to put everything in perspective, the conformation, the pedigree. But at the end of the day, my my mind has to tell me this is the thing to do. So it's a, it's it's more a feeling thing than a than a than a strategic thing. So yeah, it's I cannot really explain it. It's not uh, anyway. Yeah, but I'm sure uh, breeders uh, understand exactly what you mean, because I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Then it's good. <laughs> then we have uh, Gino from Italy. Is uh, Ibn Farid still with you? Did you buy him? How is uh, his progeny? You know, Ibn Farid, um, we bought from Alavajar. We used him for two years in our breeding program and then we sold him to Metcrest Arabians in America. And but the progeny we had from him is we have some really nice fillies from him, which we will retain for future brood mares. So and then obvious Farage, world champion of last year. It, uh, yeah. So even Farid did a really good job as a breeding stand. Yeah. Then we have uh, Lucio from Argentina. I would like to know if you could only choose one of your mares uh, in order to continue your breeding. Which one uh, would you choose and why? Ah, this is a really, <laughs> it's a really tough question <laughs> because I actually don't have one favorite on my farm. I have like, I think five mares that I will, if I can keep these five mares, I still can continue in my breeding program. So for just to have one mare, for me, I have favorites, but as I said, it's like, um, no, it's, I have five really nice mares, which I really like. So it's, I don't actually have a, like a favorite favorite for sure. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Mahmoud from Emirates. Why you decided to take uh, Sham Saladin uh, and use him in your breeding program? Did you use him only with a straight Egyptian or also with not straight? I never, to be actually, 
I only bred one straight Egyptian mare with him. All the other mares were all domestic pedigrees. They had some Egyptian in the pedigrees, but it was not. The, uh, we only bred one mare to him, which was, is a straight mare. So, you know, the thing with Shams is, is he has this, this kind of eye on a horse that and in the in the pedigree, the, fa the father is also like this. So, and Ariella has a really good breeding program. And you know, it's a breeding program that you they can use outcross stallions, like they use this JR Malu, um, and they produce good babies. So at the end of the day is what we try to do is because we have a very big domestic pedigree breeding program. And we just thought it would be a really good idea to maybe just get a straight Egyptian into this modern kind of pedigree Maybe not to produce the next show horse or the horse that can win Paris or Aachen, but to set a new phase of young broodmares with a different kind of pedigree that we can breed again to our modern horses like Barjas or like um, Mabub Alavajer, which is it's a it's a more kind of show horses. So it's just we I try to have a balance because you have to sometimes go one back one stage back to go three steps forward and you know I just had the thing is too more too lot too many modern pedigrees together maybe it's not a bad idea to put the straight Egyptian well for sure not the world champion you will produce maybe but you never know but it was just to have a new phase of young mares that we can put in our breeding program in three years time so it's it's more like a it was only a it's like the breeding plan it's not that we and the thing is you know a lot of people these days they want to just breed to the world champions here and world champions there, but at the end of the day, it's not always the world champions that's maybe the right stallion for your mare. And this is what we try to do is we try to find stallions that we can breed our mares that can make their folds better. So yeah, this is why we did it. Well, it's very interesting to stay here and listen your uh, your thoughts. Also because uh, um, I can say that uh, my... Uh, I'm in your same wave. I did some something like you in the past with my mares. I used a straight Egyptian stallion to bring inside of my breeding program something particular. And uh, uh, so I'm completely in your wave and I'm uh, happy that uh, people can listen uh, uh, your opinion. Uh, I would like to thank you, you and Lisa. And uh, I hope to have occasion soon to meet you somewhere. Thank you very much and you're more than welcome, for sure. Bye, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Okay, now we have a small break and then we will be back with the next guest. This program is offered by...
So I think uh, that uh, Nicolas is uh, here with us uh, to, to talk with us a little bit. Hi Nicolas, how are you? Hello, good afternoon. I'm very good. How are you? Good, good. Hello Thank Nico, you. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I know that you recently moved uh, to yes. the ex uh, privilege facility, right? Yes, I did. I did. Very nice place. I've been there a few times and it's very nice. Yeah, it is. It is. That's for sure. Did you like ah. your new place? Are you happy about it? Yes, I'm very happy about it. And also why? Because it's really nature. We are in the middle of the woods. So the only thing we hear is birds and horses and the tractor at the farm. And for the rest, we don't hear anything. So it's very nice, as you can see on the video. How many horses do you have uh, right now with you? Uh, now we have around, let's say, 40 horses at the farm. Ah, okay. Already, already a big number, huh? You yeah, have to work is, all day. Is. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So how would uh, this uh, passion uh, started in your... Uh, what is your story? Why you become a handler? Well, already I was born in the horses. My parents always had horses, but they were in the jumping horses, so in the warm bloods. And uh, as a young kid, I also well, started riding horses. And 20 years ago, my mom decided that she wanted to have an Arabian horse. So we went then to James Swanepoel from Swatam Arabians. And there my mom bought her first horse, a foal, a filly foal. And uh, like this, yeah, we started, we went to a show with her as a fall and uh, we kept going and I really liked it. I liked it more than the jumping. So, and then so the disease growing. came from your mother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got <laughs> me into it. Good. And uh, wow, those horses? Wow, nice, uh, covered arena, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's a big one, it's good big one and then a lot of pasture so uh, I really love that uh, w when the horses can stay and live outside uh, and enjoy the pasture like uh, uh, they should do you know uh, to, um, to keep yeah. the horses uh, uh, every day inside of the boxes uh, it's not very nice but uh, I'm sure with uh, all the pasture that you have in, uh, pre in uh, your um, uh, new facilities ex privilege uh, it's quite good yeah, for Who sure. Are the, for sure. These two young uh, girl. Uh, the bay one is a Farid daughter, Yelling Philly, and the Chestnut Philly is a Magic Magnifique. So this was the first time they met each other. We put them together in the field. <laughs> they so enjoy they're really a lot. Friends now. <laughs> and this one, this mare. This is um, uh, Donna Maria. She's an Alejandro daughter out of uh, Natsira Pal daughter. She is actually from my mother. My mother owns her. Ah, very nice mare. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's nice. We use her as a brood mare now. Ah, she is very And the two nice. fillies uh, is um, from your clients or are yours? No, this is the from clients. The chestnut. Yeah, very nice. Clients. Also, the, the chestnut is very nice. Yeah, yeah. Very good. The nice fillies. And this bay one? This is uh, Hatem Adba. He's a son by IKS Alejandro out of Esperanza Alventure. I'm sure some people have seen him already at the shows. Uh, I've shown him already a couple of times. So, ah, there he yes. is. What's about the yeah. Very ah, nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a really nice horse. I really like him. Very correct, tall, very refined, amazing attitude. He already has some uh, force born? No, not yet, not yet. How old is he? Now he is four years old. Okay. So he still has a bright future ahead. Okay, and this one? 
This is uh, Justin, he's a Justice son. This is actually one of, let's say, my first horses I showed. Um, he's from, he's owned by a Belgium uh, person, ESM Arabians, and I know I'm this, I know this person already for a long time. This stallion now is 11 years old, so I know him since he's a baby. And uh, yeah, now recently when we, when I started my training center, he decided to bring him back to me, so I could take care of him for uh, the rest of his life and uh, to have him with me. So that's nice. Nice. Is there uh, any of uh, his progeny that you are particularly proud of? Well, actually, he bred a lot of mares, but mostly in France. Um, the quality of the mares he bred were not like superstars, but nice mares. And you know, it's quite difficult to go to shows. You already need to have high standards. But for sure, he has some. He had some nice babies already. Like the owner himself also has two really nice fillies. Normally, they're supposed to come. But now with, uh, yeah, with the problem we have here, the Corona, they cannot come because France is quite strict still at the moment in the area where he is. But for sure, he, he produced some nice babies already. Most, most part he gives to them is big eyes, really big eyes, uh, tall legs and amazing attitudes. Uh, do you have a lot of uh, Alejandro son and daughter at your farm or uh, it was just a coincidence uh, that uh, we saw two of them? No, we have we have some here, some Alejandros, yes, we do, <laughs> we do. Okay, uh, let me see if we have uh, some, uh, some question in our uh, social room. Okay, we have okay. Uh, John from uh, Germany. How long uh, you are doing the trainer and uh, where you been uh, to learn this job? Well, trainer already quite a long time. I started when I was 11 years old going to shows already with uh, training centers, with Chukun's training center, uh, with Obi when he was still working at James Wallerpool. So, but I learned a lot at uh, Chukun's training center, STC, like they say. And uh, yeah. I worked seven years, eight years for Adbastad from Saudi Arabia. And there I was training the horses, showing them and yeah, it's just it came step by step. First you start to clean stables and then you start to land your horse and then you go up. <laughs> so. And then now are you taking uh, students to your training center or not? Well, if people would like to come and learn, for sure, it's my pleasure. I mean, it's always nice if you can, if you can teach somebody else what you know yourself. And it's also nice for me to learn new things every day because you learn every day. Okay, then we have uh, Joris from Belgium. I think uh, you know him uh, very well. Uh, what is your yes, most uh, memorable uh, memorable uh, memory of your career so far? So far, I think it's winning the bronze world champion with Gabel Adba. Uh, what was actually not really expected or not what I expected. And it was really a surprise. I didn't know what happened to me. I, in the beginning, I could even not believe it because I didn't hear it when they pronounced it and everybody told me, Ali, go inside, go inside. And I didn't want to go because I thought they were joking with me like they always do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that, that, was, uh, that was really nice. I have a couple of really nice moments, but now the first thing that pops up is having the bronze world champion with Gabel Abba. That's uh, ah. something I will never forget. I can believe it. Then we have uh, Nadine from France. Uh, are you only keeping horses for your clients uh, or you also are a breeder? Uh, I also, I'm also a breeder. Uh, me and my mom, we have some horses together that we breed. Uh, like this year, we have, we, we have the mother of Luigi that is owned by Shahania now and standing at Obi Training Center. Her name is Lolita. She's in full now again to Kans. Hopefully to have a full sister of Luigi. She's uh, due in, let's say, uh, one month. So, well, we breed one or two babies a year. Just small. Okay. And uh, she keep asking, uh, which is your uh, favorite uh, bloodline? For well, my favorite bloodline? For me, there's not really a favorite bloodline. For me, it's just, I have to love the horse, you know? Uh, you have all different bloodlines. You can make crosses and, it all depends what comes out. 
So, and I'm willing to to use all different bloodlines. It's always it makes it interesting. <clears throat> then we have uh, the last one, Beatrice from uh, Croatia. Have you only got Atba horses, or do you also accept uh, smaller clients? No, 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 not only other horses, I accept from everybody, everybody who to bring their horses, they're more than welcome. Okay, the door is wide okay. open. Thank you very much, Nicholas, and I hope to see you soon, uh, uh, maybe in Menton show. Let's hope, let's hope. inshallah. <laughs> like inshallah. Let's hope. Thank you, Nico, yeah. I hope to see you soon, bye. My pleasure. Bye, bye, see bye. You Thank you, take care, Thank you. bye. -bye. Okay, so now we have uh, some, uh, some short study break and then we will be back with our uh, third guest, Elisa Grassi. This program is offered by... Hello, we are back. Elisa, are you with us? Hi, I'm with you. Ciao. Hi. Ciao, Elisa. Ciao. It's strange for me to talk with you in English. <laughs> <laughs> Normally yeah, we talk in Italian. Same. Yeah, it's the uh, same. Eli here, Elisa, it's, uh, Elisa, it's okay or uh, uh, Madame Milana's uh, Jeff will call you? <laughs> Elisa is okay. <laughs> <laughs> I take this opportunity to say hi to Jeff Wallace, our friend. Yeah, me too. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, Elisa. So, uh, you Ciao. are. Uh, an Italian living in Germany. What do you miss about Italy and what do you love about Germany? Oh, you're going to put me in trouble like this, Elena. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, number one thing I miss about Italy is my family, my friends, um, plus well, the weather, the sun, the country itself is, I think, very unique if you're lucky enough to be born there, um, to know the country, you would always miss it if you live somewhere else. So it's been tough, but it's 12 years now in October that I'm here in Germany and I've learned to appreciate here. Um, well, it's a different culture, different people, but um, I'm happy. So that's important. Maybe the food. You love Germany uh, food, right? No, the food in my house is strictly <laughs> Italian. <laughs> I have, luckily, my mother supplies all the 
necessary. So no German food here. <laughs> Is there German food? I... <laughs> I know you come from a family of Arabian horse breeders. Uh, please, could you tell uh, our followers something about the horses that uh, was part of your family life? Well, I, my father started to breed Arabians when I was very small. I, I don't know, I must have been three or four years old, so I kind of grew up with them. Um, the one horse that kind of represented my father's farm was for sure Kirgala. He was out of a Russian mare by Capron. And uh, the father was Morok, so he was, uh, let's say, uh, Egyptian-related uh, stallion. Uh, we bred a few folds and we had some success with them in Italy. Um, he stopped breeding a few years ago, so he's more into the endurance now and the riding part of the horses in general in Italy. So. So, Elisa, you are the Pierre of uh, two of the most important uh, and famous farms all over the world, Anaya Stad and Dajma Stad. Uh, let's show some videos and uh, can you introduce uh, for us uh, uh, this year's stallions at uh, Frank Spunle Training Center? We have a few stallions that are available uh, for breeding this year. This one, what you see now, is um, a young colt, he is three. Um, AJ Elaf is his name. He's the son of AJ Mardan, which is the chief sire for Ajmanstad, out of a Sheldrim Desert daughter. Um, the first folds hit the ground a couple of months ago, and we are very excited. Um, we believed in him from the beginning on. He has a bit of a different look, and for sure a very different pedigree than what you are used to in Europe. There is no Justice in. there is no Marvan, so he really fits on many of our mares at Ashwanstad, as well as most of the European mares. Um, like I said, the first babies, we, we bred last year six, seven mares from Ashwanstad and a few outside mares, and both us as well as the people who bred to him are very excited with the babies. So, it's a young Yeah, it's on the... Uh... On Facebook, uh, some very nice pictures from uh, Johanna and from uh, also other breeders, and the yeah. results is quite amazing. Eh? Really, really it, nice. It, the, the head is it's uh, very unbelievable. Impressive. Yeah, we are, like I said, we're very happy with him. He gives size to all his babies, a very good conformation, and he keeps these very extreme faces on them, which is what we like. So. The people keep on breeding to him. Knocke Arabians has bred some mares and they have some nice foals born already this year. Like you said, Johanna has a couple of very nice babies as well. There had been some breeders in Poland also who bred to him last year who are very happy with the results. So we hope it continues like this. And then I okay. think you have uh, uh, El Ganador as uh, in breeding this year, right? Yes, that's the first year we bright breed actually to him last year we focused on the show season we didn't want to do both at the same time so he breeds for the first time this year as a four-year-old we are very excited to see what comes uh, next year we have some very very interesting males in fall to him so and he's open for breeding so he's available for with fresh semen in europe um it's very exciting we actually took some new pictures of him this morning and he's just a very, very nice stallion. I, I really like him. The charisma and the attitude he has, you seldom see. And we hope he passes it on to his babies next year. I yes, remember uh, when uh, fir first time I saw him, uh, if I'm not wrong, it was uh, uh, maybe in Menton show. He was a yearling, right? Uh, yes, I can exactly. uh, remember that I was so amazed about him that uh, if you remember well, uh, I was in your VIP table telling yeah. you and uh, Mrs. Uh, Naila Hayek, please keep a reserve a breeding for me. And it was just a yearling because he was uh, yeah, already, yeah. you know, something spectacular. Look, it's a, it's an interesting story, the one of Ganador. We, we were contacted a few years ago um, from Gaston Labadie in, in Argentina. Um, and he sent us a very short clip of him and Frank and I saw him, it was in the evening and, and we thought, oof, this looks very interesting. And we were on the phone with Naila at that time. We thought, you know, she is a breeder of straight Egyptians mainly. She's had in the years a few non-Egyptian horses as well, but 
Um, we thought it would have been something different and something cool to have for her. So we showed it to, to her and she said, let's do it. So it took a while until we finally saw him live because well, he comes from Chile. He flew that time to the Emirates because we were planning the show season there with him first. So when we first, uh, when he first arrived in Ajman, we got a phone call uh, from the grooms there telling us what an amazing cult had arrived. So we had been for sure very excited the first time we saw him there that the expectations we had on him were actually fulfilled. And he's proved it the last few years in the showground. Um, he won many titles. Now he has to prove himself in the breeding bar, but I'm sure he will do great, especially with the mares that Mrs. Hayek chose for him. He was a uh, best mover in uh, Paris uh, 2019. I think this is a mm -hmm. very important uh, title. In your experience, uh, how much uh, uh, the movement passed from uh, father to progeny? Often, I think. Um, I'm, I'm sure that all his babies will probably carry the same attitude he has. Uh, he has it so much in him that it will be very difficult to not to pass it on. Um, the good thing with Ganador is often if you have lots of movements, in my experience at least, you tend to lose a little bit the prettiness and Ganador has both. So we hope next year with the babies to have both the type and the pretty face is what we like as well as the attitude he has. Uh, we keep finger crossed uh, for, uh, for yeah. him and his babies. We'll, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Elena, maybe there are some questions from the social room because, uh, you know, I talk with Elisa every day, so I don't know what to ask to Elisa. <laughs> if I need to ask something, I can call her after. <laughs> yes, we have, uh, we have some uh, questions. We have Barbara from Italy. Hi, Elisa. Mm -hmm. I remember you when you were uh, working for Fontanella. How was your experience mm -hmm. there and uh, which horse do you remember as your, uh, as your favorite Font as, uh, at Fontanella? <laughs> well, it's an easy question. Actually, it's two questions. Number one, I had a blast at Fontanella's place. Really very fun years. Uh, lots of shows we went to. Uh, Giuseppe is a, I don't know if you, for wh whoever knows him knows he's a very special person and he's a lot of fun. Uh, my daughter was born there in Napoli. So that's one of the best memories I have of that time there. The favorite horse was for sure and by far uh, Vervaldi. He was at least there for one and a half years at Fontanella's place. And I had a connection with that horse from day one. And I, it's still probably the horse of my life if I would have to pick one. And he's I the think. father of AJ Mardan, so. <laughs> Thank you. So we have uh, Hans from Germany. What do you think mm -hmm. about the Arabian horse business today? Any suggestion to get more interest on this breed from outside people? Well, it's, it's a difficult question to answer, especially in this particular time. Um, this year, it, it seems like, well, lots of shows have been canceled. So to get people, you know, into it is going to be more difficult than ever. Um, I, I think it's um, the, the problem I think nowadays in our business is that for us, a small breeder to come in and compete uh, at the high levels becomes extremely difficult. There are so many competitors with such a high quality of horses that it's a bit tricky to get new people in and to be able to bring them to the top when the top is full of amazing horses. So it's a bit of a difficult question to answer. And now in the current situation, I think it's nearly impossible to get people in our business. Um, one thing I would do, um, what I think could maybe help. Um, I, I, I was invited a few years ago in Italy um, by Boscarino. They organized a show in Parma, the city where I come from. Um, I was there judging um, and I think that kind of show is what we would need more nowadays. It was a breeder show, so the horses shown there had to be bred and owned by the same person. 
Um, there was no VIP area. It was a very, it, 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 it felt a bit like the shows of a few years ago, like many years ago. Um, it was more of a friendly, familiar atmosphere, uh, everybody together. Um, nowadays, you have this clear separation between the VIP areas and the, you know, the rest of the people and the crowd. I, I think to to make some some shows or organize some shows, but the people feel all somehow at the same. To say level maybe sounds bad, but um, that feel all together, all a bit more relaxed, not the stress and the anxiety and the competition just enjoy the horses. I have really nice memories of that show. And I think it, it would be good for the business and for sure for the small breeders in Europe to organize more shows like that. Okay, thank you. Then we have uh, um, Julia Domen from Germany. How did you start mm -hmm. with Arabian horses? Well, it, it started through my yeah. dad. Yeah. He was he bred Arabian horses. He actually was breeding part bred Arabians when I was really really small, and then he started with the Arabians when I, I was like yeah three four years old I think. So that's it's his fault if I'm here today. <laughs> okay. Then we have uh, Antonio from Spain. I was thinking on uh, these days uh, there is no more breeders uh, interested to buy a breeding mare. Why? Uh, the big farms are uh, looking only for uh, show horses. As manager uh, of such important farms, uh, uh, what do you think uh, will be the future of the various uh, good broadmares uh, that maybe are not show quality, but they are the one uh, who produce uh, the, the champions? Well, he's right. There is not much interest in the breeding stock. Let's say it's difficult if you have a horse who could win Paris, you would sell it in a minute. But if you have a nice mare or a nice young colt who could become a breeding stallion one day, it's a lot more complicated to sell. Uh, many people call us and they ask for a show champion, a show horse. Very seldom somebody comes and is looking for broad mares to buy. The big farms don't really need them anymore. They have them already. If I look at Hanayastad or Ashmanstad, they have a big number of proven broadmares, so they are not really looking to buy more. They breed them themselves. They breed the champions as well as the breeding stock. So they don't really, you know, look for broodmares at the moment. Um, and the, the new people that come in, you know, to to reach the, the level where you can breed, um, a, a, a champion, it takes a lot of dedication and takes a lot of time. And most of the people who come into the business today don't have the patience to wait, you know, the years it takes to breed the champion. Sometimes out of luck, you breed it right away, but it's very seldom. And it's, you know, it took Ashman start several years to breed the first world champion, for example. So with, with the, the amount of mares they had, so that's, I think, the problem. The, the patience that is missing today for the new newcomers who want to have directly the, you know, the, the, the show horse to go and have fun on shows. And the big farms have their breeding stock. They don't need to buy more. Okay, then we have the last question. Marsha Thompson, how is uh, Escape ABN Navarone doing? I <laughs> saw him uh, win in Las Vegas and I am uh, fortunate to have a gorgeous filly. Escape is doing great. He is 21 years old this year. He is as fit as ever. He lives a very, very happy life in Ashman. He's the king there. Nobody touches him. So healthy and hopefully he stays with us for many years to come. So thank you very much, Elisa, for your time and uh, for being with us. No problem. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you very much for your participation. And uh, I, I hope to see you somewhere. I will talk to you tomorrow somewhere. probably. So. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Let's hope. <laughs> bye bye. Bye Thank bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Now we have a few uh, minutes of break and uh, then we will be back with uh, Ali Nelson. This program is offered by.
So here we are back with uh, Ali Nelson, manager of uh, Sahara Scottsdale. Hi, Ellie, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Very good, thank you. We are, um, there has been a transition at uh, Sahara Scottsdale. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, actually, it's a really exciting time for us here at Sahara. Uh, we had a training center for quite a few years recently, and we've decided to kind of get back to the original vision of Sahara, get back to our personal breeding program, focus on the mares and all the wonderful babies we have out here. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, you have a wonderful uh, group of uh, broodmare within the Sahara Scottsdale program. Can you tell us about uh, a few of them? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the owners here, Jeff, Norm, and Jamie, they've done an amazing job, along with the guidance of many people that have helped them, uh, to put together an incredible group of mares. First and foremost, probably the most recent well-known would be Baviera HBC, who was crowned gold world champion in Paris this year. Um, prior to heading off to Europe for a couple years, she was U.S. national champion. She was Vegas champion. She also was Brazilian national champion mayor before she came, before we purchased her and she came to the state. Uh, we also own Honey's Delight, who everybody knows Honey, um, but she's the dam of Delight's Diva, um, the dam of Esperanza, who's owned by Aspa. For us, she's had Aria Majesty, who was a Scottsdale Junior Champion Colt. She's given us Aria Aphrodite. And now is in, we're expecting two babies from her next year, from Alejandro and FAL Racine. Um, we also have HEB Caramba, who is very well known, has international champions all over the place. He's done a great job. That's a few. I could go on and on forever. So that's a few <laughs> okay. of our best. And what about the success of uh, the Sahara program in the showing? Yeah, they, it's, there's been a lot of great success, a lot of fun, as you can see behind me. Lots of saddles and roses and trophies to show for it. Um, but some of them, obviously, I already talked about Baviera. Uh, let's see, we also had Aria Majesty, which I talked about. We had MD Hibat Allah, who is a Valentino daughter. She was U.S. national champion. We have the Stallion Delacroix, who's by RB Dynamo, and he won U.S. Nationals as a maturity horse. We have Conquest BR, who was a Versace son, and he was U.S. National Champion Yearling, U.S. National Champion Futurity. He won in Vegas, and he also won in Scottsdale. We have Baha here, who is a straight Egyptian stallion, and he's won the Egyptian event. He's won in Israel, where he came from. He also won the New York show here for us and was the Scottsdale Egyptian champion stallion. Aria Quintessa, Aria Athena, all of them um, all have some pretty good titles. But Baviera, who you're seeing now on the screen, uh, was our most recent, and she is on lease to Abbas Said. She will be coming back to us here shortly, but that was a really exciting moment for everybody. They are doing some uh, some baby with her. Yeah, yeah. So we we have a couple that we bred there, um, and then they are also breeding her as well. So, um, Sahara Scottsdale uh, is the temporary home of uh, two international stallions, uh, AKS Alejandro and uh, Sultan JK. How are they doing in America? They're doing great. Um, it's really an honor to have both of them standing here. Alejandro, I mean, he speaks for himself, two-time world champion, along with all of his other undefeated titles. He, America has always loved him. We've always been breeding here with Frozen Truman and he's had great success. Um, but it was really exciting to actually have him here. You know, a lot of people in America didn't have the opportunity to see him in person. And unfortunately with coronavirus, we still really haven't had that chance uh, to really showcase him. But he's been breeding many, many mares. He's very busy. 
Um, and I really look forward to those babies coming next year. And then Sultan, he, same thing. We've had quite a few incredible babies born this year. And a lot of his first, he had a couple in Europe, but his first big full crop is, is just now hitting the ground. And I'm sure you guys have seen some of the videos out there. The, the babies are really extreme. So we're excited for that. Ah, this we, is Sultan. Personally, this is Sultan, yes. Yeah. So we personally are breeding very many babies to both of these stallions this year. Wow, you know, Ellie, uh, I just bred two of my mares with these two stallions. One uh, with Sultan, yes. uh, already checked, yeah, already checked in fall uh, last week, and the other one with Alejandro, okay. and we will check next week. So finger crossed for well, me. Okay. <laughs> I really love both <laughs> of them. I do too. Well, my fingers are crossed for you, and we're on the same breeding path this year. So. Thank you. And the uh, first time I saw Sultan, it, he was in uh, Giacomo Capaci uh, training center. He was just, uh, uh -huh. uh, I think, two years old, very young, uh, uh, you know, called uh, very young stallion. And uh, I never mm -hmm. saw him uh, again after that time. I just saw a video uh, of uh, that maybe was during a presentation in Scosdale. Uh, not the show, the, just a presentation of the stallions. And I was really amazed by him. Uh, the movement, the charisma, yeah. uh, it's something really unbelievable. So I decided to use him with my mare. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, he's really impressive. You know, two of the babies that have been born this year have been out of uh, Rasheen daughter, and they are just extreme. They're not owned by us here. The, the Rasheen daughter is owned by Sahara, but we sold the embryos to clients and they both bred to Sultan and really extreme, beautiful, beautiful babies. And this pedigree is really interesting, uh, uh, not only for the yeah. uh, part uh, of, uh, of his father that uh, came from uh, Stival. I always liked this, uh, this stallion. I remember him first time he was, he, uh, was arrived in, uh, in Europe with uh, Frank Spurl. Uh -huh. uh, I immediately called Elisa because Gigi was there doing some photos and uh, it was really amazing the way he was, uh, you know, keeping the neck, uh, very arched neck uh, and the tail, uh, the movement. Uh, I was really impressed about uh, Steve and I used him once. And, uh, but also mm -hmm. the um, uh, pedigree of Sultan in the mother line is very interesting. Uh, uh, poor Golden Cross with the Egyptian and Spanish yeah. blood. Uh, very interesting. I'm really curious to see what he will do. Yeah, I know. Now we just have to sit and wait. <laughs> <laughs> I do have something if you guys would like. I can go ahead and bring him out. What do you think? Yeah, wow, I think that uh, really, will be really you amazing. Can go <laughs> go, All right. Go. Well, shall I? Okay, let me switch to my phone so that I can walk. Give me one second. We will see him. All right. I hear him. He's coming. No. Okay. Walking out. Can you see him, Elvis? Yeah. Yeah. There he is, Sultan. He's wearing his his Scottsdale champion roses today. He's wonderful, huh? Really wonderful. Look at the tail, the neck. The tail all the time. And his neck, it's like he has extra vertebrae in there. It's really impressive. And this is actually one mare that we did breed to him this year. A senior magnum mare. He's breathtaking, huh? I really love him. How old is uh, he? How old is Sultan now, Michael? He's five this year, still young. Ah, uh, yes. He's being handled here by Michael Carpio, our farm manager. Pretty cool horse. Yeah. All right, thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much to everybody.
Shall I switch back to my computer? Yeah. As, as you like. Okay, so I think uh, she's, uh, okay. Hi. At first, uh, I have to say that uh, our uh, our followers uh, got crazy to see him live. They really appreciate that uh, so much. Good, I'm glad it worked out. And me too. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, how many of us do you have coming for 2021? 2021, we're still in the process. We still are breeding a couple mares. Our breeding plan was to have about 38 to 40 babies. And we're wow. well, we're well beyond halfway there. So it's been What's a busy, enough, uh... busy breeding season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Yep, it's fun. Elena, All of our babies, do we have our mares. Sorry. No, no, sorry. Go. I was say most of our mares live at Omel Arab. Um, the Scottsdale facility is more of our show facility. It's not really set up and designed to have a breeding mares and babies. So they get the luxury of growing up on the grass pastures with Yanina at Omel, and our our embryo transfers are all sent there. And then when the babies are born and they're ready to get into show season, then they head back here to the to the sales facility and show facility. Elena, do we have any questions from the social room for Ellie? Yeah, yeah, of course. We have uh, Gina from USA. Hi, Ali. Now that Andy is moved to Orion Farm, who is taking his place? Hi, Gina. Actually, we've decided not to replace Andy. So we are no longer going to be a training facility and accepting outside horses. We're just going to focus on our own breeding program. We have an amazing relationship with Andy. And when he went, we sent a couple of our show horses with him. He will still show many of our show horses. And then we'll send a couple out to some other outside trainers. Thank you. Then we have uh, Crystal from USA. Uh, both the stallion uh, we saw are very European style. Do you think Sara is trying to move uh, its breeding program uh, closer to the European style? No, I, I wouldn't say that we are necessarily trying to change our breeding program to any specific style. Uh, we're still breeding to all of our stallions that stand here as well. So it, it's just a matter of finding the perfect cross for each individual. Thanks. And last question we have from uh, Corinne from France. Uh, what do you think could be a good mare addition to Sahara? And if you could pick a stallion to add to the breeding program, who would be and why? Great questions. Um, to add a stallion to the breeding program, we have quite a few that we own ourselves here. And I think that we have a very nice diversity of them. I enjoy bringing in the European ones, having like Alejandro will play here two years. And Sultan was the same. He'll be heading home soon. Um, so I like the idea of kind of rotating a couple through like that, but actually purchasing another one to add to our program, I don't necessarily see a need. Um, and as far as mares, you know, a oh, tough question. There's so many different routes that you could go with that. Um, we have a great diversity of mares already. Um, so I think it could go any way. And the partnerships here, they're always looking for new and exciting, exciting horses to add, so. So thank you very much, Ali, for joining us. We hope to see you soon. Uh, now let's go with uh, Samadhi and uh, see you back in a couple of minutes with our, uh, guest for, with our last guest of today. Bye, Ali, okay. thank you very bye, much. Bye, bye, bye. This program is offered by
So here we are with a last minute uh, change of program. Uh, Travis, who was uh, supposed to be our last guest uh, of today, had some uh, last time issue and could not participate. Uh, so we apologize for uh, this inconven inconvenient and invite you to follow us uh, next Friday. I'm so sorry about it because, you know, Travis, uh, uh, I was uh, really interested to, to talk with him. Uh, Travis' father uh, was the breeder of uh, WH Justice, uh, he was the owner of, the, of this farm, so all the horses with this WH um, uh, suffix are uh, bred by his father. Pity that uh, he had this issue and uh, I hope uh, maybe we have a soon occasion to have him uh, with us. Uh, so, um, bye to everybody and see you next week. Thank you very bye. much for following bye us. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye-bye.